is Dr. Doug Moreland. I'm a senior neurosurgeon with the University of Buffalo Department of Neurosurgery. And today, I wanted to talk to you about the sacroiliac joint dysfunction. Over the last 30 years or so, there's been a great increase in the depth of knowledge of the spine. And over the last 10 years, that has expanded off to the next forefront of spine surgery, which is the sacroiliac joint. And the sacroiliac joint is just off the spine. The sacroiliac joint actually only moves a couple of degrees. And even though there's a small amount of motion there, this joint can be tremendously painful. So in my practice, we've really seen a lot more patients who have been misdiagnosed with back pain who actually have sacroiliac pain. And in fact, um, anywhere between 50 and 30% of the patients that come into a spine surgeon's office with back pain actually have sacroiliac pain. So when we see someone in the office uh, who we are suspicious of having sacroiliac pain, almost every one of them will take their finger and they'll point right off to the midline, right just below the belt line to that area where the pain is. Sometimes these people will have so much pain that the pain will actually go up into the spine a little bit or down into the leg, but by and large, the pain focuses right on the joint that, that's affected. What can reproduce that pain or what are these patients complaining about? Well, this joint is a weight-bearing joint. It's carrying everything you know, uh, of the trunk and the body above it. So any mechanical stress or pressure on that joint can reproduce that pain and it can be quite debilitating. So if someone's walking or standing for too long, sometimes people, even if they're laying down or in bed or if they manipulate that joint too much, can cause that severe pain in that area. In extreme cases, that pain can be there all the time and just consume someone's lifestyle so that their quality of life and their ability to do normal and simple activities are compromised every day. As far as establishing the diagnosis of sacroiliac joint dysfunction, uh, it first begins with the history. And the history would be pain in that location and pain with stressing that joint, be it sitting, standing, or maneuvering it in any, any, any way. The physical examination is also very important with a test like this. And this is something we call the provocative testing, where we actually have a patient sit up, lying down on the exam table, and there's a number of maneuvers that we can do, but all of them are based around stressing or moving that joint and seeing if it reproduces that pain in that area. Those provocative tests are extremely valuable in confirming the diagnosis on the physical examination. Most people that come to see me, they've already had some type of therapy or medication, but if they haven't, certainly you want to try conservative measures first. And this can be physical therapy, can be chiropractic therapy, anti-inflammatory medications, and injections. Okay, all of those are reasonable treatment options. And usually I will see these patients after some or all of those have failed. Our next step is to confirm this diagnosis in consideration for doing a definitive treatment such as surgery. The confirmation of that comes from what's called an injection or a provocative test. And if the patient has failed appropriate conservative measures and the injection, the provocative test injection is positive, then surgery is a reasonable option. And so I would have a discussion with them about the uh, SI joint fusion. And in, in my practice, I use the uh, iFuse implant from SI Bone. It's a triangular shaped implant. And so there's a great surface area for the person's bone to grab onto and for the to, to, to get a uh, very good stabilization of the joint. My experience with my patients is reflects what we see in the published literature, which is 80 to 90 percent of these patients are very happy or reasonably happy that they had the surgery done, that they have good to excellent outcomes. And that's certainly been my experience, so it's, it's very gratifying for me to have implemented this technique in my practice because some of these patients have been misdiagnosed for years and to do a 45-minute procedure uh, as an outpatient to, to take care of their pain and change their quality of life it's uh, very gratifying that for them, it's very gratifying for me as a, as a surgeon.